Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. Tim, what's going on, brother? <laughs> you know what's going on. I do know what's going on. I do. I do. Yeah. I've had one of those mornings. I say mornings. It's 4 p.m. where my day has completely gotten away with me, and I... I I remember I used to operate like this many, many years ago, obviously before, you know, we do what we do and I found a different way, you know, one destination, two paths, right? <laughs> um, I'm just, and today's, it reminded me of how I used to operate. And it, oh, my, my head just feels like it's going to explode. It's awful. Well, to be fair to you in this situation, right, one of the reasons this is happening to you is, it, one is this is unusual for you. And what we're talking about for the guys that are listening to this, and if, especially if you're new to the podcast and the powerful man, uh, our methodologies that we teach is, you know, there's the hustler, right? The person who's grinding it out, running around frantic, kind of pulling out your hair. You're always stressed. Cortisol levels are through the roof. Um, you do that on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Uh, well, Tim hasn't done this in years. And so I kind of chuckle because you're now in this situation where you're going through this um, and it's external of you. But this reminds me, Tim, of a conversation I had just yesterday. And I talked to a guy who applied for the activation method and, and he didn't make it. Not everybody does, as you know. But uh, he was frantically running through life too. And not that this is happening to you, but what he found out recently, his wife of over 20 years was now having an emotional affair. Now, while he was running around, while he was working late, while he started to work weekends, he just start, also became more abrupt. He became a jerk. He admitted this to me on the phone. And during this process, which he saw as being a very short process, right, in the last six months or so of really hustling, grinding it out, things not really going well. Now, mind you, they've been together since high school, right? She would say, and I asked him this question, how long would she say this has been going on? And he said, Doug, she would say it's been going on for over two years, if not more. <laughs> and he didn't see the signs. And so she turned to social media, as many people do, right, when they're lonely or looking for something. And she then got reconnected with an old boyfriend in high school. Mm. A previous relationship. And conversation started, and of course, he didn't know this. So at that time, when conversations are starting with him and the, uh, her, his, his wife and this other guy, you know, things started to slip at home. He was being a jerk. He was being shorter. He was running around, rushing around, frantic, stressed out about money, about, you know, things not working, right? Trying to make them work, yet it wasn't enough. And here he was on the phone, Tim, with me trying to figure out what the next steps are. So what would you say to a guy who just finds out his wife, 20 years, right? 20 years married, had been together longer than that, was now having an emotional affair. So no physical touching had happened yet, but she was having a relationship with somebody online at this point. What would you, what advice would you give to that guy? <laughs> Finally, it was as simple as, you know, one or two lines, right? There's a lot to unpack there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the first thing that, so the first, one of the first steps we like to go through with the guys when they come into the program, into the activation method, is we give them something called the clean slate method. And really, that, that's a way in which to have a conversation with your wife so you can wipe the slate clean. And, um, you know, there's the overall um, purpose of the conversation, a loose framework here for anybody listening, is to essentially come clean to your wife about what's going on, about how you have been showing up or not been showing up more to the case and acknowledging that and accepting also the impact it's probably had on her and the family and that you are committed to doing something different but the key with this is is the reason why this works and you know we've had it in the past where men have used this technique Doug and the wives have literally cried because the guys are finally seeing something and saying something that the wives have been wanting them to see and, and to say for so long. But not only that, 
to take action on it as well. Because for a lot of the guys that, that come to us, this guy in particular, it sounds to me like, you know, he's been aware of certain things. He's ignored the warning signs as is, is common. And, you know, telling himself the story of she won't leave me, which is common, despite 70% of divorces uh, been triggered by women. And as a result, you know, he, he then, I'm guessing, has probably made a few broken promises. Oh, I'll be home early tonight. I'll be home for dinner. Um, whatever else goes with that. I'll go on vacation. I'll be present and it takes him three days to land. Even when he gets off the plane, he's, you know, still in the office. Um, you know, and this wears thin on the wife and on the relationship. It just erodes the trust, erodes the connection. And sometimes the guys as well think that, oh, well, you know, I'm making time for the kids, so it's, it's okay. But that's even worse because to your wife, it shows her that you can do it, right? You're doing it for the kids, but you're just not doing it for her. So maybe you just don't want to do it for her in her eyes. So when the guys use the clean slate method, one of the keys is that they've actually joined a program and taken action. And they can show their wife that rather than just saying, hey, I understand what's going on. Um, I apologize. And things are going to be different this time because that's just not going to cut it. So with this guy in particular, I think the first step would be to, you know, use the clean slate method, take an approach to wipe that slate clean. And it's going to take time. It's going to take time and it's going to take a journey because the guy, I would really encourage him at this point to unravel the real price he's paying across the five territories in his life, because you and I both know, Doug, that if it's got to this point in his relationship, to the point where his wife feels that alone, that she's rekindling things with an ex, then usually that goes with the guy being so out of balance in his life that he's probably been putting on a few pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 yeah. pounds. He, you know, he's, he's waking up feeling anxious, exhausted, his snapping, his, you know, there's, there's a whole cascade of things that go on across all the five territories. And he's just not a nice guy to be around in this, but he's not a bad guy. He's doing what he thinks he should do, which is go out there and make money for the family. But, you know, if we were to ask his wife or his kids, hey, would you rather have, have daddy home for dinner or have daddy out making the next deal? What do you think they'd say? They'd obviously say daddy home for dinner. I'd imagine. So, yeah, there's an unraveling for this, this man that gets to take place. And from there, you know, we then get to reprioritize things, inside, living from the inside out, right? That's what we like to teach. And um, it's in the journey. He's in the journey. And that will open up other corridors and other possibilities. But there is no, hey, hey, go do this. The clean slate can start the process for sure. Um, but it's not as, as simple as, you know, hey, this is going to be an overnight tra transformation. Because your wife is obviously very far away from you right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it, what happens, Tim, in these situations often, it, it happened to this guy, and I asked him, and it was true, is now he's trying to repair it, right? And so he goes oh, home no. and tries to do the right things, right? Oh, no. He's trying to be the good guy. And of course, she doesn't believe him. Like, yeah, why now? And, you know, he's trying to win her back, so to speak. And, you know, he wants to go kill kill the other guy right he's found out where yep. the other guy lives yep. he wants to which is understandable and uh, yep. he didn't do that but at the same time you know his wife is testing him and i, and I told him and, and guys listen to this yep. if you're in that situation this might be your scenario with your relationship with your spouse is things are going wrong you're gonna you're gonna be the good guy now right you're gonna take out the trash you're gonna do the dishes you're gonna help with dinner help with the kids whatever it is and you do that for a day or so and everything's good, you're nice at home, and your wife tests you, right? She pushes your buttons, and you snap, boom. And in that snapping, you have just proven to her that you are not changed at all, that you are just acting a certain way. Yep. And like an actor in a play, you're playing a role. It's not really who you've embodied yet. And that's the difference with the alpha reset, right? It's a reset, reclaim, so you yep. actually embody a completely well, who you really are, you're shedding away the things, but it's a, a different persona, so to speak. Uh, and that's where it comes in handy. So he was telling me, Tim, he's like, yeah, Doug, this, I've seen this happen again. I keep going home and I'm doing these things. And she's just saying it's not enough. And the truth is what she's really saying is I don't trust you. They still live together. They still sleep in the same bed. She loves him. He loves her, but he's been a jerk for so long that he's, 
Mm-hmm. He's got a proven history of being the opposite man he's trying to be now. Yeah. And, and you know, you raise a great point because we see it so often where these guys have this realization of where they're falling short, whether it's the emotional affair, whether it's the divorce papers, whatever it is. And one of the worst things they can do is to swing that pendulum and do a complete 180 and start to pander to their wife. And, and just because it's, it's the same problem, that just, that just repels her even more. Yep. Because she can't, it's, no, it's trust, right? You've got to rebuild that trust. And this is, <laughs> I love it when the guys are able to use the tools that we share with them as they get back from the alpha reset, because we would go through all this, don't we? Where, look, you're going to be tested, you're going to be prodded, you're going to be poked, you know, here's what to do, here's how I might show up. And, you know, when they actually use the tools, the, the connection between them and the wife is, in their words, something they've never experienced, you know? And part of that process, like you say, is, you know, one, to rebuild the trust. But it, if a guy, I'll back up a second, Women, in order for a woman to fully trust a man, part of that is that she really wants her man to have purpose in the world, right? But she isn't going to trust him if he loses himself in his purpose. He's also got to be able to be present for her and and the family, right? That's where the trust is going to come in. If he loses himself in his purpose and gets burnt out and exhausted and overworked, she can't trust him. So if that guy, like this guy we're talking about, when he realizes this, if he does a complete 180 and swings the pendulum and all of a sudden is home early from work and he's you know, talking all about her and what she done the day and just being someone that he's, he isn't in order to, to please her, that repulses her even more. That repels her even more. That, that erodes the trust even further because this is a guy that, hang on a minute, why is he not standing his ground? Why is he not being himself? Why is he not owning his boundaries? And, you know, yes, making changes, but doing it in an authentic way that's true to him. So it's a, it's a risky game to play swinging that pendulum. You've got to be able to have um, the right people, in my opinion, the right people around you to guide you through this process. Um, usually marriage counselors and therapists, for our guys anyway, just aren't those people. Um, and the right tools as well to be aware of these because there are going to be speed bumps as this guy goes to reconnect with his wife. And like you said, it is all a case of, hey, I don't trust you. I want to reconnect, but I need to feel safe to do that. That's going to take time. This is where the intimacy usually goes as well, right? Because as, as she goes through her pain of being isolated, she then closes down, and usually she will either harden and make decisions and become the alpha and lead the family because the guy just he isn't there. Even when he's there, he's not there. Or she'll fall and become anxious or depressed or even seek salvation in the arms of other man like this woman has. But either way, she hardens and that's where, you know, the, the repel as well and the, the intimacy declines. And it's all about, it's kind of like, we use the analogy of a flower, right? Put in the right environment, it blossoms. Put in the wrong environment, it, it, it dies, closes down. And that's what's happened to this woman, right? She's been in the wrong environment, she's closed down and uh, all of a sudden... Him, he thinks if he turns into this big ball of sunshine, she'll just open, but she's going to close further. Yeah, and it's exactly it's polarization of energies, right? You have masculine and feminine energies. Um, and you know, I asked, you know, again, this guy they tried marital counseling, didn't work. Um, but the point was, they still love each other. And he, his friend, told him, right, his best friend, is you gotta, you gotta go talk to a lawyer, file for divorce right away. Wise up, man. Wise up right away and get out. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I go, let me guess. This friend that's giving you the advice is in a crappy relationship or just got out and is divorced. He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, here's the deal. Your wife loves you. You love her. You can repair this if you really want to. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it, Tim, you and I, time and time again. And what makes matters worse, in my opinion, right, is he's got kids. And one of them is a girl. And I said, well, how do you treat your daughter? Mm. Oh, man, treat her like a princess. Yeah. I wanted to make sure she knew <laughs> that she was, she, well, you know where I'm going with this. I want yeah. to make sure she knew that she was loved and taken care of and that this is how a man should treat you. I go, do you treat your wife that way? No. Soul silence. It's like, no, nah, yeah. I, I haven't for a long time. I'm like, exactly. And guess what your daughter's watching? 
she knows that that's the way a father treats a daughter, but she also knows the way a man treats a woman is the way you treat your wife. Mm. That's the role she's going to grow into one way or another. And he went, crap, you're right, because I'm doing the same thing my parents did. Mm -hmm. And he had kind of that epiphany moment. Now, you know, this guy is great, and we could definitely have helped him, Tim. We, we only work with business owners. He just didn't happen to be one, so he did qualify for the program. But we left him, or I left him with some things that he could start working on right away. But the point is, is there's so many men out there that are seeking an advice from a buddy that they had in high school when they go out and get a couple beers. And that guy, you know, one is on your side, two, you know, he's not going to make you look at the hard things in your life. And, you know, nothing wrong with his friend for saying, hey, you should go protect yourself. But if he followed his friend's advice, he'd be out of the house, filing for divorce, miserable because the woman he's loved his whole entire adult life, his entire adult life, wow. this one woman, right, would be pushed far away. He wouldn't be able to see his sons as much or his daughter for that matter, you know, all because, you know, seeking crappy advice in that sense, right? And then those things that he can be doing right now at his home or taking advantage and seeking out counsel. Now, he did the right thing by reaching out. That's the first step always. Reach out to a group of people or men, especially that have been there, done that, and know the journey, right? Relate to the journey and can help you a proven methodology that can help you along the way. But like Tim said, like you said, you got to make sure that you're not just going in to appease like a dog, mm -hmm. bowing at your wife's foot because she's not going to respect you. You're going to yeah. lose all respect in that situation. Yeah, it's key. It's interesting, you know, for the, I'm just putting myself in this guy's shoes. It must be so tough, you know, the only woman he's ever loved and um, to find this out. Wow. Ooh. It's, the thing that came to my mind as we were talking there was complacency. Sounds like he's he's become quite complacent in his relationship with his wife. And he's, you know, it's easy to, it can be easy to do, right? Um, and I'm, yeah. I would say even worse, right? Not even complacent, but negligent in the sense that he took it for granted. Complacent settling, mm -hmm. right? And you're in this one flow, but taking it for granted, you know, you've been with this person for so long that you know what do we do as guys humans yeah. we snap at the people we're closest to right because we don't think they'll ever go away well this guy did it one too many times right yeah one too many times and guess what his wife went away into the arms of another guy a lesser man most likely right i mean who's the type of guy that preys on married women on facebook for all <laughs> for all, all tens and this guy he confronted him tim he confronted oh, wow. the guy. Yeah. You know what the guy told him? I'm not going to stop pursuing your wife. You can't stop Ooh, me. Ooh, yeah. what a, that is a rallying call, isn't it? Wow. Imagine being in that position. Oh, that was a tough conversation. And, and, but it, was, it, it also was great to be able to provide this guy with hope. And like, look, you know, she's telling you she still loves you. She just doesn't trust you. Right? Trust you can rebuild. Trust you can come back from. Right. You just need to change your ways of being and, and really do a reset here. So, Tim, parting advice for any guy listening to this right now who finds himself in a similar situation where he's drifted apart from his partner and his partner's chosen to have an emotional affair. Maybe not a physical affair, but an emotional one. And that happens a lot more often than most men know where they're Instagram, yeah. Facebook, LinkedIn. It's just so easy these days to get caught up in that spin. What would you tell him? Parting words. I want to give two layers to this. The first one is to hopefully avoid you ending up in this situation. Listen, guys, don't ignore the warning signs. Don't be too busy. Don't think the little things don't matter because they do. It's uh, the little things add up in a big way. Um, the second thing is don't think that she won't leave you because she will. 70% of divorces are started by women. Like, you know, and there's a, there's a there's a a day of the year on the calendar, as termed by lawyers, as divorce day. It just happens to be the day that most of the women actually file for divorce. So you know, you want to be having that hanging over your head. So don't you can stop, you can prevent yourself from being in this position. Uh, now, if you are in this position, I would encourage you to the first thing, which is to come clean. Now, we give the guys the clean slate method. You've heard on this episode how to go about doing that. So come up with your own clean slate method. And, and do that. The second thing is 
be mindful of swinging this pendulum and, and pandering to her to save her and win her back because that's going to push her further away. You know, the, my, my guess is the guy that she is in this emotional affair with isn't pandering to her. And that's part of the why, uh, part of the reason why she's attracted to him. So you've got to understand what your boundaries are within this situation and, and be able to navigate them. And the third thing I would say is be very careful who you take advice from, you know, because it can be so easy because the advice is coming from somebody who, who loves you. And I'm sure they're giving you the best advice that they know how to give you, but it doesn't mean it's the best advice for you. So I'd be very mindful of that. Excellent. Well, great, solid advice. And, uh, to that guy listening, it was great talking to you and, uh, best of luck. We'll be in touch. So gentlemen, if this rings true for you, go over to the alpha reset.com where you get a training from none other than Tim, the powerful man, Matthews himself, and also some tips for you to pull yourself out of this downward spiral. That's it for us on another episode of the powerful man show guys, make it a great week and we'll see you next time.